Coming up on building a fursuit from scratch, tonight we build our own crash test dummy, I point at a sewing machine, and we try on an incredibly silly pair of pants. Hi, my name is Waffles, and on this episode of Building a Pro Ninja from Scratch, we're tackling building the bodysuit for our fursuit. On the previous episode, we went ahead and finished the head, and on this episode, we're tackling building the rest of our costume. The fursuit bodysuit is essentially a jumpsuit made out of fur tailored to fit your body. It's a one-piece outfit, and it's what separates partial fursuits from full suits. Now, this all sounds great in theory, but there's a problem. How do you actually create one yourself? The solution is actually quite simple. We're going to use something called a duct tape dummy, or DTD for short. A DTD is a cheap and easy way to create a mannequin of your body that you can then use to create the templates needed to create your own fursuit. Our plan in this episode is actually quite simple. First, create a pattern of our bodysuit using a DTD, cut out all of our pieces of fur, sew everything together, and then finally add the smaller details. Now, before we can start working on or creating our DTD, I want to first talk about the fur that we're going to use for this project and the sponsor for this episode. Now, if you've always wanted to build your own fursuit, one of the first questions that you might have is, where do you buy the fur for your fursuit? That's where Big Z Fabrics comes in. For a protogen, we're going to be using their solid, shabby, long pile fur, and it's going to be part of their Eco Shag line of products. I've been using their fur for a couple years now on my fursuits, and I've always been really happy with the quality and how well it performs. Right now, Big Z Fabrics has over 60 colors of fur to choose from, with more coming later this year. Perfect for that sparkle dog fursuit you've always wanted to create. Or, Big Z offers wholesale pricing when you order seven or more yards of fur. And they don't just have fur too, their solid poly spandex works great as a liner on the inside of your fursuit. Big Z also wants you to know that it's some of the cheapest fur per yard prices and flexible shipping options. Personally, I recommend buying swatches of all the colors of fur that you might use. It's a great way to test things out before spending all of your money on several yards of fur. So with all that being said, thank you to Big Z Fabrics for sponsoring this project and providing the fur for our protogen. When you first make your duct tape dummy, it's a huge mess of tape and fabric. The process to create one is basically, put on a pair of disposable painter's overalls, and then have your friends systematically cover you in tape. Once they're finished and you're cut free, you're effectively left with a second pair of skin made entirely of duct tape. Our goal here is to get a one-to-one -one copy of our body, and before we can do that, we first need to clean things up. We can start by filling in all the places cut open to set us free, and then sealing in the ends of our arms and legs and making them shut. With everything patched up and sealed, we can go ahead and stuff the whole thing full of polyfill. Now that we have a mannequin to work with, we can really start playing with fire. One of the most powerful things about having a DTD is that it's a reliable way to get accurate measurements of your body. For example, if you measure the length all the way down the side of the DTD, you'll have a good idea of how long your bodysuit will need to be. Once satisfied with all of our measurements, you can use a marker to go ahead and start drawing out all of our pattern pieces. Now that we have everything measured and marked out, we can begin the process of cutting apart our DTD. There comes a point whenever you work with the duct tape dummy and it just kind of explodes. So I think it's done its job and now we can get rid of all of the polyfill and really break this thing apart into little pieces. I'm gonna go ahead, cut the whole thing up and then show you all of the rest that we're gonna need to do to go ahead and build our bodysuit. So we've gone ahead and cut out all of our pieces and you can see it's actually not that long. It's a total of nine pieces with 
two for the front and back of the chest, one for the belly, four for the arms, and then two for the bottom of the legs. The reason why the arms and legs are two pieces is that because we're going to start playing around with some of the fur lengths too in a little bit. But for now, the next step is to go ahead and get all the pieces cut out. One thing I'm going to do before that is actually just to go ahead and record a bunch of measurements just for my own personal notes. And that's just going to make putting this thing back together a lot easier. Because remember, this line here should be straight. And as you can see, it has a pretty good wiggle wobble to it. One slight issue I noticed while tracing out our pattern, it's just a little bit too long for our entire length of fur. I found that quite a bit funny. It's gonna be pretty easy to fix. All we need to do is just chop off an end and then just sew it back together. But I was really hoping to get this entire pattern done in as few parts as possible. Nonetheless, the next time we do this, we'll just buy our bigger piece of fur. Now, with our pattern cleaned up, we can begin to mark out everything onto our fur. When tracing out the pattern, I'm more so using it as a guide instead of just blindly tracing it. Clean, smooth lines here will help make the final product look a lot better. A trick we're gonna use is to only cut out half of the pattern and then flip it over to create the whole piece of fur. This helps for two big reasons. First, it helps make everything more symmetrical and if everything is more symmetrical, it'll make sewing it together a lot easier. Something to keep in note when cutting out the arms and legs is that they're not perfectly straight tubes. Instead, they're more of a funnel shape that starts big at the body and then tapers off toward the end. Just like with drawing, it's important to keep in mind good shape language when designing your fursuit. So I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is that this bodysuit is actually turning out really good. This is a total of three pieces and if I'm being totally honest, these two pieces here could just be one piece because my fur was too short. Speaking of fur, this is about half the bodysuit and I've totally used up that entire yard of fur. So I have another one on the way. So for now, we're just gonna work with what we have. And while that waits to um, ship in, we're gonna start sewing this here piece together. So to start, let's go ahead and attach these two smaller pieces to the bottom of the bodysuit. And then while we wait for the fur, we can go ahead and cut out the belly on the other side. Now, while we wait for our fur to ship, let's go ahead and knock out a few random tasks that we can do just to keep ourselves busy. Starting with the hole for the neck, 
On the front side, I'm gonna make a nice large kind of oval shape here. On the back side, I'm gonna make a little bit of a smaller one. That means when we go ahead and put our two halves together, they should just come together nice and smooth. Now, in order to make the belly piece, we're gonna go ahead and just use this piece and slap it on this fur and then just trace it out. I'm sure there's a smarter way to do it, but I can't think of it and that should work perfectly fine. A funny thing about these two colors of fur, these were left over originally from the previous project and I had a ton of this teal left. Now, somehow we've ended up in the exact same problem where we have way too much teal fur and basically no dark brown fur. I just think that's kind of funny. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and knock out this piece. Then we can go ahead and sew it all together. A trick you can do to make a more accurate copy of your parts is to trim down the edges of fur. This will allow you to make a cleaner tracing when you copy it with a marker. Whenever you pin two pieces of fur together, you always wanna go in kind of a star pattern. Just like tightening the lug nuts on a tire, going in a star pattern helps the fur from bunching up and makes the parts go together a lot easier. One small benefit to not having enough fur and needing to wait for the fur to, get, um, to show up before we continue is that I've remembered to add the zipper before sewing the bodysuit together. So that's the next task we're gonna knock out is attaching the zipper to the back of the bodysuit. That'll be just one more thing that we can do while we wait. And it should be way, way easier to do it now before everything is sewn together. To get her zipper ready, I first cut the extra material off the top and then cut the bottom down to size. Now we can pin it in place to the back of the bodysuit. A trick to making adding the zipper a lot easier is to first sew it to the body and then cut the fabric. This will make sure that it goes on nice and evenly and gives you that invisible zipper effect. Now that the zipper is attached to our bodysuit, we can carefully cut the fabric open. And finally, to fix any clumps from the sewing machine, we can run a slicker brush over the fur to help unstick any of the fibers. Now, with our shiny new box of fur in, we can go ahead and wrap up the last of the cutting, shaving, and sewing.
So after an afternoon of sewing, we have our total half finished. It has the arms, the legs, the torso, it's all put together. And the other half is in a big crumpled ball right there. Now, the next part is honestly the hardest part about making a bodysuit, and that's combining the two pieces. The trick is we're gonna go kind of like seam by seam and work our way out, starting with the center. So we'll pin that together and then connect both of our halves. So let's go ahead, get the last bit of sewing done and finally finish our bodysuit. Now that we have all the sewing done, we can go ahead and talk about the last thing on our list, which is adding the binding fabric to the neck. Binding fabric is a trim piece that covers the rough edge of our fur, preventing everything from unraveling and itching your neck. To make one, all you need to do is cut a long, straight strip of lycra, and then fold each end in on itself. Then you take that and fold it over the rough edge of the fur. It looks complex and it's kind of fiddly and it falls apart, but with enough pins, you can hold everything together while you sew it shut. Finally, we can turn everything inside out and then give it a good brushing to clean it all up. And now, with everything finally finished, we can go ahead and try our bodysuit on. So overall, I'm really happy with how this bodysuit turned out. I think the biggest thing for me was it was a huge learning process in just making a more professional uh, fursuit. I did a lot more measuring in this one bodysuit than I probably have anywhere beforehand, and I think it really shows. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't a few more things we can improve. Specifically, it is quite tight. I think if I was gonna do this bodysuit again, I'd make it probably 10 to 20% bigger. Because right now, this uh, bodysuit fits me, but it probably doesn't fit anyone else. But overall, I'm quite happy with it. Now, there's one more thing that we need to do, and that's try it on with the head. Now, in the future, the plan is to have some sort of pocket in the bodysuit for the batteries, but for right now, we can just hold on to them. So, let us put on the visor. Do you tell me, YouTube chat, has a protogen been living up to your expectations? What do you think we should build next? There's still a ton of different parts we have to do, and this isn't even close to being the final form, but I think it's been turning out really cool as we've been building it along the way. So with all of our hard work done, we can go ahead and call the bodysuit for a protogen complete. In the next episode, we're probably gonna focus on either the hands or the feet or the tail or the armor. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but it'll definitely be something cool. Now, before I sweat to death in this bodysuit, I'm gonna go ahead and call this episode complete. But before I do, I ask you one last thing. Can you go ahead and check to make sure you're subscribed and give this video a like? It's something free that you can do to help show your support for, the pro for this Protogen project and it helps me out immensely with the YouTube algorithm. I thank you guys again so much and I can't wait to see you guys again soon.